Let's start to break down this game just a little bit. And I want to start with the quarterbacks here. And let's look at the quarterback from Michigan. That's J.J. McCarthy. And as of late, he's been lackluster. Uh, zero touchdowns and one interception in the last 13 quarters of play. He's slumping right now. Yeah. And I think uh, quarterbacks go through this. But how concerned should we be about the slump? I, I do. I, it has to be concerning, right? And what you notice there is, of course, Jim Harbaugh not on the sideline. Uh, Jim Harbaugh was known as a quarterback whisperer when he came to, to Michigan, and it's taken a while to get there to really solidify that, but that's his guy, J.J. McCarthy. They have an awesome relationship. J.J. loves Coach Harbaugh. Coach Harbaugh loves J.J. And, of course, now with Sharon Moore, who, let's not forget, he's the offensive play caller yep. and the offensive line coach. So without Jim Harbaugh on the sideline, who's the person that's going to go talk to J.J.? It would have been Coach Harbaugh, or maybe it was Sharon Moore. But now Sharon Moore has full-time head coaching duties I was told a story by some of the players that in the Penn State game he comes over you know the Michigan defense is on the field so Harbaugh or uh, Sharon Moore goes over to the the Michigan offensive line in the offense and takes off his headset to try to get some adjustments going and he had to have an assistant coach come tap him and say, hey, coach, put on your headset. Can't You're still the head coach. We need you. So that that's something that plays <laughs> into J.J.'s ability to kind of bounce back. I, I agree with you there. And I always joke around about this. Like one of the criticisms I've had about Ryan Day at Ohio State is that when the game gets tight, he calls the game like a, a guy who used to play quarterback. It's a position he played in college. It's a position that he's coached a lot of his career. Well, Sharon Moore calls the plays like he's an offensive line coach, mm. right? And mm -hmm. I think that to a certain degree, you got to take the governor off of J.J. and let him open it up. And, and Roman being hurt against Maryland certainly doesn't help. And the idea that you could run the football and they were protecting the lead at least early on in that game, it, it feels like all the things play into running the football. But the idea is J.J. has to get going. And there's a question about how healthy he's been. He took a shot against Penn State and maybe he doesn't look the same, but to me, He's got to get going. They got to find that explosive pass game down the field like they had done earlier on in the year. They have to let him use his legs a little bit. And ultimately, play calling has to be creative or else Ohio State's going to be able to line up and make it really difficult for Michigan to move the ball. It's a good defense. Here's a thing that I think plays into this, though, because we talk about the 30 straight run plays versus Penn State. Um, we, we talk about J.J.'s struggles last week. There's two things that have stood out to me. Michigan's tackles, their edge protection has Boy. really struggled. I mean, I think that's we, – we say, what, did they want to run the football? Maybe not because they couldn't block Penn State's edge rush. Showed up versus Maryland. We know JT Tuimoloa. We know what he can do. Jack Sawyer has been playing some of his best ball as of late. And, you know, part of this is making sure J.J. is comfortable in the pocket. I think he's dealing – he's not 100% healthy. No one is. There's no excuse. But I right. think the O-line plays a, a, a factor into this one. And the last thing I'll say, too, is, is against Maryland, J.J. had four turnovers turnover worthy plays there were at least I think there were uh, three footballs that hit defenders in the hands and then the one that was intercepted he can't do that against Ohio State that's a great stat turn